Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me here. Uh, thanks, Pippa, for inviting me. Despite the, how should, I, how should I call it, the exotic focus of my paper, uh, I feel a bit guilty that you had to create a regional panel instead of poorly uh, thematic ones just to accommodate this strange paper that introduces a new set, a wholly new set of actors. You have been talking about uh, governments, incumbents, a bit about parties, about bureaucrats, street level bureaucrats, higher bureaucrats. But I will introduce really very different types of actors, uh, organized criminals, uh, violent criminal organizations. I will be talking basically about what is usually called the, the drug war in Mexico, uh, the war against drugs, the, uh, uh, the war against organized crime. Uh, and I will uh, try to convince you that it's not just a security problem, but a democracy problem, that it does heavy damage uh, to democracy. Uh, just very quickly, I, I will not tell you very much about Mexico, just a, a few sketches on the, uh, what I describe as the civil war, the new civil war in Mexico. Um, my, my idea, my idea on, on the, what I call the societal subversion of democracy is, is embedded in, in, a, in a larger syndrome, but Mexico is kind of my significant case with which I illustrate that. Uh, and uh, the, the subversion of electoral integrity, it's, as always in, in such cases of civil war, information problems are overwhelming, but I think I, I am able to mobilize quite some evidence uh, about the subversion of electoral integrity by criminal violence. Um, just the, the general idea in which I embed this, uh, I would say, normative assessment of criminal violence and its impact on, on democracy. The idea is basically that uh, in the comparative literature, in this seminar, we have been focusing on the subversion of democracy, the subversion of electoral integrity from above, uh, the vertical subversion by state agents, be it high level or lower level state agents. Uh, and what I'm trying to, to draw our attention to is that democracy and electoral integrity may be subverted also from below by societal actors. Uh, uh, so it's both state and society who have the capacity to damage democracy. And, and then, uh, as I focus on violence and not just any kind of, of, of lighter subversion, um, one major point is it's not just political violence. We are used to talk about and to think about and to analyze political violence and its damage it does to, to democracy. It's also criminal violence that is profoundly corrosive of democracy. Uh, so the general uh, first distinction, the distinction between uh, vertical subversions and horizontal subversions of democracy, uh, a basic difference between which types of actors are involved, uh, how centralized are, or decentralized are these processes, and whether they are backed up by uh, the state's supposed monopoly of violence or societal challenges of that monopoly of violence. Yeah. Uh, just think about a couple of episodes to, to, to make plausible that idea of societal subversions. Um, the, the, the attack against uh, Gabriel Gifford at, at the constituency meeting uh, back in 2011, uh, the, the uh, assassination attempt against uh, the girl Malala uh, in, in, in Pakistan, who is both are luckily recovering, uh, a whole series of, of uh, incidents in uh, post-transition or transition Egypt, of uh, collective public violence against women within a clim climate of exclusion of women from public space, uh, or in Greece, a very different context, uh, a whole series of racist attacks against uh, immigrants uh, accompanied with, with heavy threats of violence. Uh, what we are seeing here are acts of societal violence uh, exercised against individuals, members of, of identified groups, um, political representatives, democratic institutions, and all with a political motif. Uh, and here in these examples, the political motif would be basically exclusion, exclusion either from the political community or exclusion from the political space. 
And my point in analyzing narco violence in Mexico is to say that it's not just political violence that does damage to democracy, it's also criminal violence. Uh, uh, we are used to analyze political violence as a threat to democratic consolidation. Uh, I'm introducing here organized criminal violence uh, as a threat to democratic quality at least. Um, so I have a, a little taxonomy uh, in, in, in the paper. I don't develop very much. I will not uh, plunge deeply into this. I know that the distinction between political motifs and criminal motifs is problematic, that boundaries are blurred, that the two uh, spill into each other, which is part of my argument. Um, and I think it's useful to think about types of societal violence as how they are embedded into societal relations of power. So you may have uh, exercises of societal violence either as, as, as acts of domination of the strong against the weak, uh, loosely speaking, as uh, strategies of competition between roughly equal groups, or as uh, strategies of insurgency or rebellion by weaker groups. Uh, and what we're seeing in Mexico is uh, across all those three categories. Uh, violence serves uh, as a strategy of domination, competition, and insurgency. Um, so the new Mexican Civil War, I will not, oh, okay, I will accelerate. Um, as you know, Mexico has been living through a largely peaceful, incremental uh, transition to democracy. And quite surprisingly, astonishingly, astonishingly, it lived through a very rapid transition to civil war over the past six years, basically. Um, the body count is it's, it's, it's known in Mexico. It's probably less known here. Uh, two things you might notice at this, at this graph. First, the explosion, the escalation of violence over the past years. The usual count is six, 65,000 uh, deaths during the six-year Calderon presidency, uh, 2006 to 2012. Uh, what is often overlooked is uh, the level of violence before. Uh, even before, we had a high level of uh, homicides attributed to organized crime. Uh, what I'm saying is simply, if we have armed groups uh, battling against each other beyond and, and, and causing a certain threshold of, of, of uh, deaths uh, per year, this is formally a, your, a, a war and formally a civil war, since it's not an external one, according to the comparative politics and IR literature. Uh, even if it's one without ideology, one that is not battled for the centers of power, uh, but just for the, for the sake of profit. Uh, so it's a new civil war uh, driven by greed and not by grievance. Um, probably I should skip the explanations. It's basically... Uh, the resources of war are almost unlimited and have been the access to these resources, money, arms, personnel, has been rising over the years. Uh, the government, the Calderon government, focused its strategy on decapitation, fragmentation of uh, drug cartels, which has uh, led to, to a which has escalated the dynamics of violence because it uh, provoked violence within cartels, succession crisis, succession crisis, succession struggles, violence, competitive violence among debilitating cartels, and violence against the state, kind of defensive uh, violence against the state. So fragmentation has, has led to the escalation of violence prominently, according to many read, uh, readings. So one of the problems we have today is not just organized crime, but a kind of disorganized crime. Uh, the proliferation of big transnational cartels, as well as uh, smaller cartels that dedicate themselves to everything that is profitable if you're well armed. Uh, so drugs is just half of the business, and the rest is extortion, uh, kidnapping, etc. Um, so some people say, well, that's normal. That's just the normal level of Latin American violence, which is true. Uh, but my time is running, so I don't present you the figures. Um, in terms of what does this violence to, to the elections, uh, you know, I have my idea of elections forming a, uh, a, a, an integral uh, chain of choice where you, you, uh, you have a, a series of, of prerequisites for democratic elections. And the core is criminal violence damages almost everything. 
uh, cartels don't write election laws, they don't commit election fraud, but they damage almost everything else in terms of liberties of elections. Um, the violation of human rights is a big problem. I sketch a bit of the, uh, of the problem. It's almost, uh, it's almost complete impunity. It's something I call the privatization of the death penalty, which the Mexican state allows. Uh, and I say it's, it's not just, we usually conceive it as a problem of security, but if you're dead and underground, uh, the exercise of your political rights is at least somewhat impaired. It's, it's, it's really difficult. Um, we talked about the, that yesterday, about zombie participation. Uh, then you have, even if drug cartels are interested basically in an in ineffective uh, law enforcement and, and, and an ineffective exercise of state power, they do have an interest in affecting the access to state power, that is electoral competition, because they want to have friendly candidates in power and unfriendly candidates out of power, basically. Uh, and so we, we are seeing that in Mexican elections. So we, we are seeing massive acts of intimidation, frequent acts of intimidation against candidates. We have seen candidates shot. We have seen in one local election, Michoacan, for example, over 50 candidates withdrawing before the elections under threats, under intimidation. Uh, we're seeing many candidates just uh, obeying the law of amorta, of silence, and not touching the, 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 those themes anymore. Uh, we have seen uh, active candidates of, of drug cartels uh, to shy voters away from the polls or to make them vote for certain candidates or against others. Um, we have seen Massive attacks against the media. Uh, Mexico over the past year has been cited as one of the most unsafe places uh, for journalists. Uh, Freedom House counts it as, as, as non-free, as not free since 2011. Uh, hundreds of aggressions are, are counted over the years. Uh, murder is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, about 80 uh, journalists dead over the past uh, decade, roughly, or less. Uh, and then we have also violence against office holders, basically at the, at the, at the local level, which I analyze uh, as, 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 as an effect to undermine the decisiveness of elections. Uh, here again, we have uh, quite uh, chilling uh, figures on the assassination of acting mayors or former mayors. And uh, I don't know why time runs so quickly. Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> The basic question is, how damaging is this? Is this just damaging subnational democracy, or is this subverting uh, democracy at the national level? It's basically not me, but Mexican citizens who have to respond to that, and I'll leave it here. Too bad. Time is over. Thank you. Thank you.